morning and welcome to another week in our garden now starting this week in the shed as you can see um, we're going to show you what I'm going to plant this week I'm going to pop a few of the onions in and I want to put some parsnips in and a little line of radish between the parsnips before we start I'll just show you the propagators I stood empty this year because we're trying to raise everything without using power. Up to now, we've done quite well, but that's an ongoing thing. I'll show you that as we go. Cheers. I'll just show you the potatoes that are sprouting up nice. They're rocket first early. They're doing very well. I've got the uh, Sapo Mira, which is, you know, they're, they're red and the supposedly blight resistant but we'll see i've got two boxes of main crop now the other thing i'm going to set this week are the peas and the beans but i'm going to obviously soak them first and i might just pump these pumpkin seeds in as well get them going quite a few as you can see these are the coco de pampo from Benny, thank you Benny, and these at the top are from, from these at the top are from Bill and Val they're two plots of heaven, worth a watch if you haven't seen that one many many thanks Bill and Val, I'll get those soaked and get those in as well this week won't do it today, we've got quite a bit to do that's what Bill and Val sent me very nice of them, thank you very much. I've got one of the cockerels running about because when I was cleaning them out this morning he escaped and I can't catch him, he's too quick for me. But I'll get him when he goes in for his sleep tonight. I'm also going to put in these beans and peas over here. I'll have them, give them a good soak but the main thing today is to put the parsnips in and a few radish. I'll get the radish seed out of the box. These are Sutton's tender and true. We've never grown those before. The beans I'm going to put in or put to soak anywhere. Cobra. Those are Belote. Those as you know to what Benny sent me. They man's too they're peas actually and they're alderman peas we've kept these seeds through from our, our own crops obviously so we'll see how we get on with those hence these peas over here that if these fail that to give me a backup now the other little job I want to do is um, we all have a, a pot of mint and every year those of you who have been with us for a while will, will know I depot it, cut it in half, and then repot it again. So that's the job we'll do before we put the parsnips and the onions in. This is the pot of mint we use. It's one that we like. Diane said this is a good mint, so we grow this one every year now. But if you leave it in this pot, this is what happens. It's not going to do a lot. So if we take it out, cut it maybe into three, or even four and then repot it it takes off again and it doesn't go flower so quick and go to seed so let's get it down and have a look it should come out it's a heavy old thing i'll just put the crops back in there look and then we'll put a bit of fresh compost and get that back potted quite a job and it's quite heavy but we will get as you can see look it's fully pot bound so we need to start it again that's the crop stuck in the bottom there's an earwig or two in it so it's a pity the chickens aren't there and then big knife and we'll cut this one I think into four 
because it's quite a big pot but it'll soon fill this pot again I'm quite brutal with it, <laughs> it'll take it that's it, it's got it breaking there look there you are just cut that off it smells absolutely beautiful not the sharpest in life and we'll take it, if we take it about there yes because that gives me quite a bit in that part we'll not be wasted the, what we don't want because there's always somebody wants some mint That's got it look and then we'll cut this bottom bits all tied old compost now so let's cut that off and that's that done so there's our piece of potty so what we'll do what I've got What I've got is our own compost out the compost bin mixed with a little bit of old peaty compost that I had in a bin. Uh, I do, I think it's not peaty, I think it's peat free because we don't buy peat compost for quite a while now. And I've mixed it with the compost out the bin and that's what we're going to pot it into. So put a bit in the bottom first. There you go. I'm afraid it's going to muck in my hands and my shirt up a bit. And then that can go back in a little bit lower than what it was. And then fill it up. Cockerel showing off because he's outside and the other zone to stop him. Oh, pop it well up. There you go drop of water and we'll pop it up in the courtyard and within days that'll start to fill up again all the old compost will go straight into the compost heaps and mix it in a little bit if you leave it in a clump because it's not going to rot anymore it'll just stay where it is so and all, the other thing you have to watch is that you haven't got any bits of mint in there as well Root. That's it will root right through your compost heat, so it's best just to be careful what you what you're putting in there when you're doing mint. But the rest I've got one or two people that like this particular mint, so I should take that to them and they'll be well pleased with that. So we'll we'll abandon this for a little while and I get cleaned up and we're going to look at those onions and parsnips we're down at where we're going to put the parsnips in it's an absolutely beautiful day but they tell me there's uh, rain and bad weather next week so we need to get these in i've already pre-wetted the lines where i'm going to put them up so the ground is quite wet down there I should just make a line along with the trowel 
and then just drop three seed if possible at each station along the line then move the line and do the same again so we just need to cut out a little bit with the trowel about inch or so deep not too deep It helps if you wet the soil before you put the parsnips in. And the trouble is this old soil sticks to the sticks to the town a bit. All the way along that. Just like that. I'll just show you. I just put some on my hand and then put them in. There you are, and you get a lot of those in your packet, but we certainly won't want all those. Now what to do, I try my best to drop them in threes, obviously sometimes you get four. A good gap, there's three gone in there, that was lucky. And three gone in there, and then we'll go in there. The idea being that if you do get three come up, just pull two out and then leave them for the season. I'll finish the row and then I'll show you what to do. Now I've got them all spaced out, I just take some compost and drop it on top, all the way along the line. Like that. Quite thick. Because we are going to water it in a minute. And if it's quite, if it's thin, when you water it will tend to wash out and as you can see there is a bit of vermiculite in this but that won't hurt it it'll perhaps make it germinate better it's the same mix that i use for putting seeds in this is but i had some left so i thought it'll do nicely here there's one or two ants crawling about at the moment, so that means we have to watch out for the aphid starting soon. If the ants are out, the aphid won't be far behind. Here we are, that's the, the parsnips in. We just moved the line and then I'll pop a row of radishes in. Some people put radish between the parsnip seed, but I don't, I put mine separate. We just put half a row of radish in now it is a bit early for radish outdoors but the ground is nice and warm now so we'll try a few and looking at the the soil of wet i'll probably put some of that uh, compost on top to help them germinate and help keep them moist as well. Just half a row, look. Where are we? A little bit more. It's nice to have a few radish to pull, but you can soon get too many. So you don't pull a lot in, but put some in every two weeks. So a week or so is time, maybe two weeks. I'll put the other side of this in, and then perhaps we'll go the other side, because we will have two rows of parsnip. So I might put another row down the middle while the parsnips are coming up. These are sparkly look, so they always seem to do quite well on this heavy land. There's the radish seed, it's quite big and there's enough there for that little row for now. Again, we're going to just take a small handful and just go along the line. We can always go again if we've got some seed left. But don't put too much between your fingers and try not to crush the seed as you feed as you feed them in when you're doing it this way. We'll probably lose a lot of these to the mice and the birds anyway. Uh, a little bit more I think to about there. And then what views here look we'll just go back to getting them. We're a bit thin at this end. I've got an old stick here so I'll just put that to know that's that's where they'll end. For radish, not a lot. 
and so just watch the birds and the um the mice used to take them but we should be okay. Just put a little bit in there. That's it. Go lay the on. We'll take the take the string out because we need the string for the onions. We will have two rows of parsnips, so the other one will be about there. Look, so I've probably put that in this afternoon. I'll just water those in, not water that compost one then. Nice and wet. I think most of this will evaporate off anyway, so I might give it another one tomorrow morning until I see some of the radish coming up at least. Quite quick germinating. And I think that I think that will do those. That will do for those and we'll show you the progress as they're coming up. The only thing I can tell you about parsnips that I do is I never put old seed in. I start with new seed every year and it seems to work because they they always used to say in the old days that parsnip seed doesn't keep whether it's different now or not but I always do that. Now we'll, we'll put the red and the brown onions in here. Now this year I shall cover the whole of this allium bed with a tunnel like that one. It'll be a double tunnel but it will be like that one. So we can keep the allium moth out. It is getting closer and closer to us. We had them with no cover on last year and we didn't get it but I'm not going to take a chance. I'd sooner put the cover on. So I'll do that over the next few weeks with you of course. So bearing, bearing that in mind I've come in quite a way because we've got to laugh for the tunnel and we'll do the same there. Look, We'll take that right up and start the first one here. Yeah, we'll use the trusty old bull planter. What she do is she put this box in with you and then I'll finish the rest as and when. Just pop them out. They're well rooted, look, they're rooted right through. They have been in the cold frame for I believe five weeks now and we've had some quite hard frosts. But if there's going to be a hard frost, if they say it's going to be minus two or three, I should just put a fleece over them. They'll put some sticks in and just put the fleece over the top. But they look good. Just pop them in and then firm them round. Don't hammer them in too tight because that has to, it'll find its own height now to finish, to grow. And I should do the same all the way along like that. Take that out. If these bits that you take out, if you don't break them up, they dry out and they're like solid lumps. Let me do this. There you go. And just ease it to them. Don't crush them in. So I'll do a couple more and then I'll finish this box for you. In fact, that wants to be there. Not too deep with the bull plant. Look. This soil has been well manured, very well manured. So the manure is deep down in it, and all it might need is a little bit of. Once they start growing, I should just top dress it with a bit of bone meal. That'll be fine. I'll put this one in and then I'll finish the show you done.
There you go. Just don't press them in too tight, that's the secret. Right, I'll finish this box and then I'll show you the line planted. That's that tray that we brought down planted. The other thing to say is I've given them plenty of room because last year I put them a bit tighter than this and they had quite a job with the hoe etc keeping them clean so I spaced them out a bit this year and we should get a better one for it. So let's water them with this big camp. It is quite wet below but I just want to settle them in, especially in this hot weather. And there's one over there, I believe. Here we are to do those nicely. Now that's all the planting we'll do for now. I will have these finished for next time I see you and hopefully be building the um, tunnel to go over them. Parsnips don't need any protection, but definitely those onions. And just to bring you update a little bit, we have taken out the Brussels. They've been blanched and frozen now. There was only about five, I think, but they've made a fair few, so they're now gone. The, uh, the cauliflowers, we've taken about four I think maybe five that are beginning to open and we've actually blanched and frozen those as well it's left me about four still in the tunnel but as those start to open up in this beautiful weather for us but not for cauliflowers as they open we'll take those as well if not, they'll open and go very hard and you can't use them. Wait, so that'll be it for this week. I've still got a little bit of digging to do there and down there, but I'll, it's a bit hot for digging today. So I will get that done. Perhaps one evening I'll come down and do it. That'll be it for this week. Many, many thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And a quick mention to Bill and Val again. Thank you for the beans and peas. I will plant them. So take care, everybody. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.